Hey there, Alaupa, dear friends. I have a special treat for you today. This is the March 2nd, 2013 letter from the Universal House of Justice to the Baha'is of Iran. And that may sound like a very specific audience in a very specific time, but I assure you it is not. As always, it is so rich in relevance and ways that we can apply this letter to right now today to our own lives. It's amazing and as they all are but this one I was just really struck with how much I needed to learn from this letter and so much here to study and meditate on and practice and absorb. So thank you for studying along with me. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Always feel free to share and comment because it'll help this amazingness reach more people. This letter was also referenced in the April 27, 17 letter from the House in regards to political non-involvement. This is kind of a follow-up. To the Baha'is of Iran, dearly loved friends, for three and a half decades now, wave after wave of persecution varying in intensity has battered your so sorely tried and valiant community, a barrage that is but the latest in a series unleashed over 160 years ago. Yet contrary to the expectations of those bent on sapping the strength of the community of Baha'u'llah, Baha'u'llah's followers in his homeland, their machinations have served ultimately to reinforce its foundations and to fortify its ranks. More and more of your compatriots, themselves victims of oppression, not only see clearly the trail of injustices that have been per per perpetrated against Baha'is down the years, but also recognize in your unbroken record of disinterested service to society a force of constructive change. As sympathy towards you, you continues to grow, so do the voices calling for the removal of the obstacles that have prevented you from participating in the life of society in all of its dimensions. Not surprisingly then, questions regarding the posture held by Baha'is everywhere towards the political activity have taken on greater significance in the eyes of your fellow citizens. Historically, of course, the position in which the Iranian Baha'i community has found itself in this respect has been a peculiar one. It has been falsely accused on the one hand of being politically motivated, leagued against the prevailing regime, the agent of whatever foreign power the accuser finds most convenient to his purpose. On the other hand, the uncompromising refusal of the members of the community to participate in par partisan political activity has been portrayed as a lack of concern for the affairs of the Iranian people. Now that the true intentions of your oppressors have been laid bare, it behooves you to respond to the growing interests of your fellow citizens in understanding the Baha'i attitude towards politics, lest misconceptions be allowed to weaken the bonds of friendship you are establishing with so many souls. In this, they deserve more than a few statements, however important, that evoke images of love and unity. That's interesting. In this, they deserve more than a few statements, however important, that evoke images of love and unity, to assist you in conveying to them a vision of the framework that shapes the Baha'i approach to the subject, we are providing you with the comments below. All right, you guys. So this is like when we're like, how do I be involved in my country, but not be political, but be involved? How do I respond with more than just statements about love and unity? Here are some statements from the House to address this. 
Inseparable from the Baha'i perspective on politics is a particular conception of history, its course and direction. Humanity, it is the firm conviction of every follower of Baha'u'llah, is approaching today the crowning stage in a millennia-long process which has brought it from its collective infancy to the threshold of maturity, a stage that will witness the unification of the human race. Not unlike the individual who passes through the unsettled yet promising period of adolescence, during which latent powers and capacities come to light, humankind as a whole is in the midst of an unprecedented transition. Behind so much of the turbulence and commotion of contemporary life are the fits and starts of a humanity struggling to come of age. Widely accepted practices and conventions, cherished attitudes and habits are one by one being rendered obsolete as the imperatives of maturity begin to assert themselves. Baha'is are encouraged to see in the revolutionary changes taking place in every sphere of life the interaction of two fundamental processes. One is destructive in nature, while the other is integrative. Both serve to carry humanity each in its own way along the path leading towards its full maturity. The operation of the former is everywhere apparent in the vicissitudes that have afflicted time-honored institutions, the impotence of leaders at all levels to mend the fractures appearing in the structure of society, in the dismantling of social norms that have long held in check unseemly passions, and the despondency and indifference exhibited not only by individuals but also by entire societies that have lost any vital sense of purpose. Sorry, I smacked you around it there. <laughs> Though devastating in their effects, the forces of disintegration tend to sweep away barriers that block humanity's progress. Open space for the process of integration to draw diverse groups together and disclosing new opportunities for cooperation and collaboration. Baha'is, of course, strive to align themselves individually and collectively with forces associated with the process of integration, which they are confident will continue to gain in strength no matter how bleak the immediate horizons. Human affairs will utterly reorganize and an era of peace inaugurated. An era, okay, I'm just gonna read that sentence again. Human affairs will be utterly reorganized and an era of universal peace inaugurated. Such is the view of history that underlies every endeavor pursued by the Baha'i community. Allow pa, dear friends, I'm going to hop to part two. Please go with me. It's connected in a playlist. I'll see you in part two of the March 2nd, 2013 letter.